Okay, so right now you've got a lump sum of money and you want to invest that into a bank fixed deposit. This money could be from a retirement source, it could be an inheritance, it could be from a matured policy, but whatever the, the source of money, you now have this capital. And I'm also guessing right now you've found this attractive interest rate at the bank. It looks amazing. You're able to invest your money without any risk. And you know for sure at the end of a certain period, let's say five years, you're able to receive a certain income or you're in a position where you are able to get a higher capital. Now, in this video, I'm going to guide you on five key elements that I want you to pay attention to before you commit into that investment with a bank. So let's get started. The first point that I want to share with you uh, is going to center around tax. Now, you might wonder why is there a need to factor tax? Because it's a bank investment. So surely there's no tax on the investment. Now, when SARS looks at how we earn income, how you earn under that income, that income is calculated based on interest as well. Meaning interest that you earn at the bank is taken as part of your income. There is a portion of interest that you can earn that is exempt from tax, but it's minimal. And that portion has not been increasing ever since the tax-free savings has come about, which means it's actually shrinking in value just due to inflation. But more importantly, it means that this income that you are earning is subject to tax. So all of the interest uh, accumulated for that one year tax period uh, will then form part of your taxable income. It's also going to be added to other income. So by that, I mean, let's assume you have a salary. Uh, I'm going to use examples here. Assume you have interest of uh, 200,000 that you've made for the year. And in addition to that, you've got a salary. This is for the year, you earning a salary of 500,000. Now at the moment, SARS is aware of the salary. So they know that you are earning 500,000 as an income. They're aware of that. What they don't know is that you have this investment. They're still to find out. So from a tax perspective, when you do your tax return, SARS is now going to add these two amounts together. So it's 200 plus 500, and they're going to tax you on the increased income of 700,000. Now, if you remember how our tax works, the more income you earn, the more tax you are going to pay. What that means is that the interest that you are earning here could push you up a tax bracket which effectively means you're paying more tax. And if you are paying more tax, it then means you're not actually getting this, the, the kind of value that you want from this investment because a chunk of this is still getting lost in tax. So that's the first secret that I want to share with you. It's just tax. And then the next one also is a surprise. And this is what happens when you pass away. Now, it happens to all of us. And at that time that you are not around, let's take a look at what takes place with this money. We know that it that this money, well, you can't put a beneficiary to it. So there's no beneficiary, which means it becomes part of your estate. So it's part of your estate. And because it's part of that estate, it is now going to be added to other assets that you have. And then you're going to have an executive fee on the total assets. Now, although this can be a little confusing, uh, so I'm going to run this one again a bit slowly. The executor is the person or company that's responsible for winding up the estate, making sure whatever you've said in your will, or even if you don't have a will, but whatever assets you've got are getting distributed in the way that you would have wanted it to, uh, especially if you have a will in place. Now, the executor charges a fee for that. And that fee, again, uh, at the time of shooting this video, is sitting at 4.025%, and this is including 15% VAT. To give you an example, on a million Rand, so if you have a million Rand invested, 4.025% is 40,250 Rand, which means before this money is moved to the people that you care about, the people that you love, the people you wanna inherit this money, the executor then has a fee of 4.025% if they're back registered. And that means per million Rand, you then end up paying, your state ends up paying 40,250 Rand, just in terms of that cost alone. So I want you to be mindful of that. 
In addition, I also want you to be mindful that there is going to be a delay, meaning this process doesn't happen instantly. It can take a few months, usually about a year, before the winding of the estate is complete. And in that period, it means that your family are going to be without this, or the people that you wanted to benefit from this would be without it. In addition to that, uh, we have to factor that other costs that come up at the time of you passing away, like capital gains talk, tax, and any other fees in the winding of the state, could all be coming out of this, meaning that a smaller amount is then paid over to uh, those people that you want to benefit from it. So you want to be mindful of the delay. Which then takes me to the next thing that I want to share with you, and that is risk. Risk. Again, I know this seems a bit strange because what risk would you have? I mean, you are investing with a bank; it's a secure institution. Or you're thinking about investing there, and they are telling you this is the interest rate that you are getting, so you know for sure you're getting that return. So, what risk is there of this? One of your risk factors is going to come in the form of inflation. So it's going to come on inflation. But the easiest way for me to share inflation to you is if you think about the price of, let's say, a loaf of bread. A few years ago, it was X, and now it's a lot more than that. What's making this go up? What's making the prices of things go up? Is what we refer to as inflation. Now, in order for you to grow wealth, in order for your money to grow properly, you have to beat inflation. You have to beat inflation. So let's use an example. Assume you have a bank rate, and the bank rate is five percent, and inflation suddenly shoots up, and inflation comes to seven percent. In my example, now because your bank investment stuck, it's locked in at five percent. It's less than inflation, and because of that, while you're getting some interest, but you're not able to buy the same things anymore. Because things are growing at seven percent, but your money is only growing at five percent. So I hope that is a key factor that you're able to uh, take advantage of. So it's a risk itself. You want to be mindful of risk. You also want to be mindful of uh, another risk, which is easily overlooked, and that risk comes in the form of uh, interest rates. Usually, when you're getting into this type of fixed deposits. Uh, you might be locking yourself in over a five-year period or so, and if you're locked for five years, the rates may go up or down. Now, assume you lock yourself at a five percent rate, and after a few months, the rates go up to seven percent. You're not going to benefit from that increased rate because you locked yourself in on a five-year rate. So you want to be mindful of that as well, is because this. Means that you caught you sort of stuck. You know, had you waited and went into something here, you would have been able to use the same amount of money but get a higher return from it. And that leads me to the next point I want to share with you, which is in terms of interest, and it's simple interest versus compound. Simple interest versus compound. Now, compound interest you might have heard of that.、Uh, it's often called the eighth wonder of the world, as Einstein had、uh, put it to us, but Simply put, here is if you have a million rand and you want to invest that, and the bank offers you a rate of five percent, five percent on a million rand is fifty thousand. So you've made a gain on fifty thousand, and this we'll call it in year one. And then at year two, you now have a million and fifty. You agree because you've got a hundred a million here plus fifty, but with simple interest. It's going to work on the initial amount that you invested, so it's still back at a million rand, still back at five percent, and still bringing you fifty thousand. So every year that goes on, the interest itself is calculated on the initial amount that you had invested. So it's always calculated on what you first started off with, and because in my example it's the million rand, it's stuck on that. The next point is how does compound interest work then? On compound interest, it's now going to start to add onto itself. So in year one, you have a million rand, and you invested that at the five percent, and that took you up to fifty thousand. 
Now in year two, you're actually starting at a million and 50. So it's adding the initial capital and that's now earning 5%. And the same happens with year three. Whatever interest you have here, it's added to this capital balance. And that's how with compound interest, you can get your money to grow a lot faster. So you want to pay attention to this before you start the investment, just so that you have an idea whether this is going to be something that's viable or not. And the last point I want to share with you. So the fifth secret is in terms of liquidity. Liquidity. So if you are committing yourself to a time period, and in my example, I'm going to say five years. So here's your one to year five. This is a five year period that you are investing. Life happens. And what if a situation comes up inside of the five years? Let's say here, are you able to access this money? And if you can, would there be a penalty because you now are no longer staying to the five year period? Okay. One of the ways that you can counter this is by making sure you don't invest all of your money into the investment. But then that could mean that you're not getting the best rate on the other balance that's left behind. So ultimately, when you are making this decision, you on, on investing in the bank, you want to have a look at all elements that's happening for you financially, including these five secrets that I've just shared with you now. So I'd like to hear from you, which of these secrets you found to be the most compelling. Um, and also, if you are investing in the bank, how has this helped you to change how you're seeing that investment? And if this is making you think twice about a bank or you found a different type of investment, I'd like you to share a comment below so that we can all grow and learn from that. Remember to click the like sign if you found the video to be helpful for you and also to subscribe to the video so you're able to get access to this content as soon as we put them out.